everybody, it's Carrie from the Rapid City Public Library, your friendly neighborhood makerspace librarian. And today, I'm here with the video for your practical making kit, which this month is a fake stained glass pane, I guess. Um, let's take a look, see what you got in your bags. I was really excited about this one. I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's see what you got in your boxes. You should have some glue that has already been mixed with paint to make it black. You should have three very small tins of paint, one of clear glue. You should have a tracing paper and then your texturized plexiglass rectangle, which is what we're going to use to make our stained glass. So we're going to start with that texturized rectangle and you want the texturized part facing up and you're going to center it on your tracing paper over the top so that you can see that design. Then you're gonna take that glue bottle and test it out, oh, that's too much, um, so you get a flow that you like, and then you're gonna go over every single one of those lines on that tracing paper. Don't worry about mess. You'll be able to go back in and fix it. You just wanna get them pretty thick. So definitely go for thick over thin and make sure to do it in such a way that you're not gonna be dragging your hand back over parts that you've already done. Um, so always kind of leave yourself, you wanna start in that kind of top corner and, and work out. And once you figure out how to, how to get that flow, you'll just do small pieces at a time. And we're just gonna outline pretty much all of those lines. If there's a part you decide you don't like, you don't have to do that part as well. You also don't have to use the paper that I included. If you have a particular piece of stained glass that you really like the design of, you can use tracing paper and make your own template to work from. Once you have that, you're basically gonna let it sit overnight and it's gonna dry. And again, don't worry if you have some spots that are too thick. You can see I've got a lot of kind of blorbs in there. Um, and that's okay because we are going to be able to fix those. So once it's dry, I'm going to use this dental tool here, but toothpicks will work. Um, tines on a fork will work. A knife will work. An X-Acto knife will work if you want to be super precise. But you can kind of push back on some of the parts that are too big um, and just remove where it's too much. So I'm, I want this to be more of a defined rectangle and, and less of a, a blurbed rectangle on the side. So I'm just kind of scraping back and scraping away the parts that I don't want. And if you go too far, you can always go back in with your glue and recover it. So this is a very, it takes a little time, but it's actually pretty forgiving. I want to try to even out this corner here, so I'm going to scrape away the parts that I, I don't want and should just be able to kind of remove it. A knife might be better for that particular corner. You want to keep some of them to give it that authentic look, but you can clean it up as much or as little as you would like. And once you have it cleaned up, we are going to add clear glue to each of our tins with the paint inside of them. As you can see, there's not a lot of paint, but um, the glue is going to make up the majority of the paint. Um, so I have divvied up my clear glue into the green, the blue, and the red, stirred those up with a toothpick, and then we are going to use our paintbrush to color in the stained glass where we want it, basically. And this is a little time consuming as well because you want to use really small brush strokes um, because the, the pieces we're filling in are kind of small. Again, you can see in that top um, poppy that some of my red paint has gone over the black line that I drew. After this dries, that's when you go back in with a, a permanent marker and make that a black line again. So again, take some time for drawing, but uh, can be pretty forgiving as well. 
can always make changes. And you're just gonna kind of, I'm gonna do all the flowers red, I'm gonna do all of their stems green, and then I'm gonna pick some of the rectangular boxes to do blue. Um, again, you don't have to use that same color progression, you don't have to use this same pattern. But just for demonstration purposes, that's what I'm doing for mine. And then again, we're gonna let that sit overnight. And this is kind of what you're gonna end up with. So it's slightly see-through. Um, and again, you can color in as many of those squares as you would like. But I think that's kind of a really cool craft and that textured look makes it look stained glassy. Thank you for following along and that is what we have for your faux stained glass panel today. Um, if you guys have any questions or you have any feedback, please be sure to let us know or stop by the makerspace and ask any questions you might have. Otherwise, I hope to see you back next month for another practical making.